So this morning we've got uh, two presentations, uh, part of this, uh, from uh, folks that have received farmer and rancher grants and I want to share their information. Um, the first one is going to be called uh, Growing uh, the Market for Urban Farmers. Uh, Amy uh, Matthews and Matthew um, Joseph. And there's people. Amy and Matthew. Hi, thanks for coming, everyone. Um, yeah, as Mike mentioned, my name's Matthew Josie. Uh, I run a small farm, about one and a half, two acres, vegetable farm in Indianapolis. And um, this is Amy Matthews. She uh, has a similar size operation uh, on a different side of town. Uh, anyway, so the two of us, as well as a couple other growers, were the recipient of the SARE grant. Um, and we'll talk about it here. All right. So these are the original member farms. Uh, South Circle Farm, which is Amy. Uh, Big City Farms, which is myself. Uh, Growing Places Indy, Roquette Farm, Sprout Urban Farm, Central Greens Farm, and Pew Farm at Butler University. Um, anyway, that's a mix of nonprofits and for-profit farms, uh, different scales and sort of different objectives, the main uh, Shared characteristics, though, we were all focused on growing vegetables. We all had overlapping restaurant clients. And uh, I believe everyone has some sort of form of a CSA program as well, some scale. So that uh, shared farmer's market presence. And we were all small, under two acres in general. Some of them even you know, sub one acre. Or whatever. So what were we trying to do with the share grant? Uh, we wanted to increase our market presence. We wanted to uh, possibly create more efficiency with the restaurant sales and distribution. And we felt like the combined volume, if we were to do this successfully, the combined volume would enable us to better serve restaurants and potential institutional clients. Uh, the idea of all of us were sort of limited by our size. And the thought was, well, if we can uh, aggregate in some way, we can achieve those efficiencies of scale and make our presence known a little more successfully. So with the SARE grant, we talked about um, uh, facilitating the development of the group's mission and goals. This was, these are the sort of the elements of the SARE grant as they were originally laid out with our application. Uh, so trying to figure out what Indie Drone wanted to be. Uh, create a brand and logo and website. Test pilot of shared marketing distribution strategies with uh, select restaurants. Shared infrastructure build out, including cooler and wash stations. Uh, basically trying to get everyone sort of up to a modest level of efficiency so that any hiccups could be avoided. Uh, and then establish an annual engine run farm tour. Okay, so those are our, our ideas. And you know when um, you write a grant that a lot of times your ideas turn out to be wrong and a lot of ours were. So um, like the obstacles we came across were... Um, Attention please, there is a vehicle in the parking lot with its lights on. It's a Honda with Ohio license plate GCB4125. Again, can the owners of a Honda in the parking lot with its lights turned on, please go out to their vehicle. Ohio license plate GCB4125. Thank you. Okay, sorry. So some of the obstacles we came across were simply time and, and prioritizing um, and extra piece of work for all of us. That was that was pretty hard. We always um, we schedule meetings that would be difficult and then um, Invariably, we all get there, and someone would call, and, and you know, someone, no matter what day of the week or time of the day, someone would show up, just like disheveled and like dirt had to tell them, oh, I'm sorry, you know, an hour late, it's fine. But um, so these things were, you know, they're really hard to to manage. Um, farms disappeared, so we started um, talking about it with seven farms at the table, so seven or ten people, and uh, by the time we submitted, we had six who were still. Um, engaged in their farms. 
And uh, by the time, you know, we really got down to the work of it, really there's four core farms that still uh, existed. Two, uh, the two farms that aren't um, with us still, <laughs> they're not with us still, uh, they were at the very beginning stages and, you know, we had high hopes that they were the ones we would help bring along. And they ended up not even continuing on their farm operations. So they were both um, kind of smaller operations and we thought, that's ideal, that's who we want to like plug into our market stream. Um, but, you know, everyone knows how, um, how farming goes um, and how small businesses go and they just didn't keep going. So we even had a smaller um, group to start with and that also kind of led to our biggest problem. Well, another concern we had that didn't really turn into a big concern was um, we had a lot of farmers, each with our own, you know, presence, and we weren't sure if adding indie growing was going to confuse the public issue. So that was just a concern we had in doing a marketing cooperative. But the real um, obstacle we ran across was um, the solution to our original big problem, which was we're kind of stepping on each other's toes with marketing and kind of stumbling around with our own restaurant sales and distribution. We realized <clears throat> when we got together to work it out that we can't actually work this out. Like getting together to, to do this in our head was going to streamline it. Like we, we do this, this, and it's going to be more efficient for everyone. And we got down to the work of it, and we were just kind of threw our hands up, and we we're like, this isn't this isn't more useful to us at all. So um, I guess I kind of talked about this. We we thought that. Um, We'd reach some kind of economy scale. We're, we're still still too small, and the market was too big to um, reach any more scale together than separately. Um, small size limited our efficiency of delivery. So again, um, even though we're all in the same city, going to a lot of the same places, we realized like we're so small. You know, most of us might have a couple part time people working with us that we couldn't even change from like a Tuesday afternoon to a Monday morning, or you know, we just we couldn't even make those changes to get together. Um, <clears throat> and that each of us still relied upon, you know, our individual strengths, you know, even if we're working with the same restaurants, um, we still relied upon, like, going to see that chef when you dropped off, um, and, you know, doing what you do when you drop off the chef, you know, you kind of talk things up, and your face is there, so we realized we still couldn't give that up, we were too young in our businesses, and it was, we were still too small, so that was a big realization, um, <clears throat> but we did um, find successes in our first year. That was all in our first year. We struggled through that. Um, we formulated our shared goals and mission. We found an organization in Indy that helps small businesses develop, and we decided to think of ourselves as a small business. So they volunteered their time, and I think we had three or four sessions with uh, um, the executive director of that organization. And that, again, was a little funny because it was during the day, and we all had been farming, and we usually, like, would ride our bikes to the very center of our downtown district, went up in a high-rise bank building and met with this executive director. And, and uh, she really helped pull us together and find our common ground. So um, we did find some common ground. Um, so we basically kind of reframed our objective. We kind of lessened our focus on the, let's you know be so efficient and, and, and market together to these restaurants and, we kind of dropped that and realized that we all had a lot in common. So going through that process um, felt hard at the time because we all had like plants to put in the ground, but um, she helped us realize like one of our main objectives was to just increase the profile so that urban farming in Indianapolis seemed like a viable way to use two acres of land in our city. And we felt like we needed to step it up a notch in marketing to do that. So uh, we wanted to gather more information and we'll talk about that. Um, we wanted to uh, improve our quality of our products together, so we felt great about um, branding ourselves together too, and we all just needed to do that. Um, and then, as you know, if we are branding together, we want to make sure we're all reaching those new food safety benchmarks, the gap. Um, so we included that in our in our new goals. So, so our uh, our second year. Were, it's a, a longer list, it's a more encouraging list maybe than the first two successes. Uh, so with the refocusing, I would say that allowed um, uh, 
that allowed us a tremendous amount of comfort in um, pursuing some of these uh, new projects, new objectives, so that we didn't feel, because the, after the first year, it was definitely um, the sense of how do we try to pursue something and make something successful that is not working. Um, so I would say that the SARE program uh, was remarkably uh, understanding and accommodating of those things. So the second year successes, we continue to engage the four core member farms. Uh, four, those core member farms are still around and still operating and still moderately successful, which is great. Uh, we created a logo, promotional video, and a website, which is in progress, uh, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it is. If anyone's ever um, gone through it for a single business and then for a shared, like, collaborative business, um, trying to develop uh, an idea and then a aesthetic and a, um, a brand, essentially, is sort of a challenge. Uh, we worked with a regional farm consultant to improve our growing and marketing practices. And this was a really great opportunity for us to um, um, interact with this guy who lives and works primarily in Indiana. Um, but he's uh, helped other farms. He's worked, he wasn't here, but he's worked with Green Team Delivery in establishing some of their uh, off-site farms. And so working with him and getting his expertise on how we can improve our own operations is really fantastic. Uh, we did a restaurant survey um, that tried to get a sense of the product, um, some of the logistics that chefs that we were already working with, how, they, how we could better serve them, uh, and then a price comparison chart. So one thing that we found is that there's a lot of concern, not concern, but questions about uh, with new farmers entering the market, as well as existing ones uh, who have been doing this for a while, having a sense of what um, what the market can bear in terms of pricing, in terms of product. And so this was our first step in trying mm -hmm. to make Indie Grown a current and future resource for uh, new and emerging farmers. So we'd love for new farmers to be able to sort of hit the ground as running as quickly as they can, I guess. Um, if they start in Indianapolis, and this was just one of those steps. Uh, we all attended gap training courses and began improving our post harvest handling facilities and practices. Again, this goes back to both two things. One, um, uh, sort of an individual priorities for the farms uh, in uh, increasing their, um, uh, the, just the cleanliness and uh, food safety of their operations. Uh, but then also it sort of ties back to that notion of branding. And if we're all saying that um, we're indie grown member farms, what does an indie grown member farm mean? We wanted uh, all the core farms to be following uh, the practices at as high a level as they could. Uh, we hosted the public farm tour, which was a wonderful success this past fall. Uh, we successfully raised 3,000 additional dollars in outside funds to support the launch of Indie Grown. Uh, this is the sort of thing that um, that wouldn't have come about without the SARE grant. And uh, that was just a, a really great opportunity um, that was presented to us um, by a, sort of a young business leadership group basically that said, you know what, we love what you all are doing. This is really exciting. How can we help? Here's some money. We'd love to get you all Started, but all uh, right. So this is our logo. It took a while. It's nice. Uh, good. It's good. It sort of gets to what we wanted uh, in terms of um, fairly straightforward, but also indicative of what we're trying to do. We're trying to it, I can see on my screen. Um, I can see it just fine right there on the computer. Uh, that's it's a fork uh, with it's hard. To, it, yeah, wow, well, sorry about that. Um, uh, but uh, it's a fork with um, essentially like leaf type adhesions. Um, so basically, very much acknowledging this role that consumers play in the success of urban farms. I don't, uh, I think all of us try to reinforce that with our own customer base as far as like you, your customers, are really what help keep us going. So. Thank you.
and you can see like part of our um, our web future web presence there. So we were able to hire a graphic designer to do that for us, which is awesome. And uh, have a website there that you can't see too well, but it'll have all of our profiles and kind of <clears throat> package us. And the goal is that uh, we want citizens to start to just. This isn't a very prominent thing in our city yet, as is it is in some other cities. So we really want to make the case to people that like this is going to improve your quality of life. You know, Indianapolis is going through lots of rebranding itself, like to attract young people, and we just want this to be part of it. Um, so we did a great farm tour. We had fifty people, which was our max for the we provided transportation. We got our chefs involved. They um, provided there's some pictures from it. Um, you can see our four farms up there, um, various sizes. The one farm is, um, I don't know, raised bed and micro green operation. Mine's in the bottom, and nephews, you can, they're all quite close to the urban center, <clears throat> which was nice to tie them together in this tour. Um, so, lessons learned. Um, we realized that we really should have someone who keeps us in check and ties it together for us, an outside coordinator. We were able to hire out a lot of these tasks, but we realized like you still need someone uh, corralling four farmers together, four or six farmers together. Um, that would have been really helpful. Um, a shared brand you know, can result in things outside of just our sales. You know, we were originally thinking of it as like, oh, we can increase our sales and be more efficient, but we thought much more broadly by by the end. And, um, a lot of the benefit to all of us is just like forcing ourselves to get together in the busy season and you know share information um, you know it's a time when we realize like oh we could buy that together or we could you know we just need that reason to do that and that Indigrants provided that for us and that was a big benefit and I think that would be a huge benefit too just for any new grower coming on so Up with as far as what the Indigrant stand for, and then we'll show you a quick video that we had made with um, part of this project. Uh, so, this is sort of the, our, um, <coughs> our mission, I guess, uh, what Indigrant stand for. Uh, we want folks to trust where their food is coming from. Uh, so, we're trying to be as uh, open and uh, engaged as possible, uh, organic and regenerative. Uh, we want um, to follow both organic practices, but also um, the uh, um, improve the sort of vitality of the city, uh, the health of the city um, is in all aspects, both physical and um, social and uh, aesthetic and environmental. All right, sustainable farming is a viable living. This is an important thing that this goes back to our increased sales. We want to, um, there are going to be more farms. We want to be able to offer slightly reassuring terms of living. And the living at it and how they manage it. Uh, and we want food to be accessible to all income levels. What does Indigrim want to do? Uh, Indigrim works to support, this is sort of just very basic, uh, works to support sustainable farm and farmers in Indianapolis. All that that means. Uh, this is what we want to become a cooperative network of urban farms, very vibrant patchwork of farms that provide an abundance of healthy produce across Indianapolis. Um, so again, sort of broad terms, but fairly specific and straightforward, I would say. Um, and it took a lot of time to reach that, to get to that point to develop those things. And I think through that, it was, um, that's something that we're all committed to, which was everything. Yeah. I think that was it, as far as the size. We got that yeah, short video. Yeah, I'll show you the promo video that we also Introduce ourselves, basically, and, um, and then a lot of it for questions, I think. <coughs> we are looking at our city with new eyes. Indianapolis is 
You're off. You got okay? lesson learned that that would have been a great idea um, so we didn't have one what oh, I'm sorry she asked um, how did we find an outside coordinator for our for our project for our group and how do we pay for that and everything um, so that was one of our bigger lessons is that it was it would often fall on one of us just to corral the group and, and get projects moving forward and um, we would have asked for funding or tried to find funding or pay someone to do that we were able to contract out a lot of the tasks, though, that we had. We had, you know, graphic designer. We had the person who made the video. Someone helped coordinate the um, tour. So things like that we were able to fund. We wouldn't have been able to do that otherwise. But we would have liked to have um, someone, you know, very part-time um, just to kind of head up the project or the project manager to kind of launch it for us. Um, I think in terms of if you're going to try to find someone, 
as far as to speak to that real quickly. Um, so the, uh, the woman who did the coordination for the farm tour is a uh, sort of a long time uh, volunteer at Amy's Farm. And I think that was, uh, my guess is that any farm, wherever it might be, has uh, some sort of base of community, individual community of member support that uh, you can draw from. And I think that that, for us, that was a really, that was a great, uh, instead of just a random person, this was someone who, uh, at least one of the farms, uh, she knew really well. And to be able to um, sort of trust in her to um, uh, convey our priorities and goals um, through that organization of the farm tour, that was wonderful instead of just hiring some random person with polished degree. Yeah, uh, we've got a program for So, uh, I'll that a little bit. Um, uh, so, in addition to Big City Farms, I uh, help run an organization called Farm Works Inc. that tries to do just that. Uh, one thing that we, and it's uh, the tax that we've taken is um, raising money from uh, the nonprofit foundations or grants or uh, individuals. And so, trying to figure out where. Um, what that motivating factor is might be for individual donors um, has been a, sort of a learning process for us. Um, one example is we worked with a, uh, a developer who's a CSA customer of mine. Um, but, so he owns a lot of low income housing in Indianapolis. And for him, he uh, uh, purchases vegetables from the farm for his residents. And for him, it's a, it's a win win. He feels good about it. Uh, he also gets a, sort of a gold star on his future applications for uh, tax credit financing for his products. Um, so I think trying to figure out um, people want to, I assume most people want to increase access to um, healthy food for all individuals, and so trying to figure out where that motivating factor might be. Is it through their business? Is it through their church? Is it through their neighborhood? The question was about low income access to produce, and that is one of our goals. And um, we, at my farm, we tried two other things. One was when my farm's a private LLC for profit, but it started with um, startup from community groups. So, in that, those asks while we were waiting for, um, while we were asking for funding for um, you know, whatever startup capital we needed, we threw in um, grant dollars for uh, what we called veggie box. Basically, they were like a lot of the programs you've heard, like double up box for SNAP and things like that. So we just kind of incorporated that in the cost of getting going. Um, and it's easier when, since we're in the city, people can think of this as um, part of their solution. So just thought of it as our part of the startup capital, like we have to provide that. And we all are certified to accept WIC and things like that at our farmers markets. I think we have time for this last one. Uh, what form of business did you choose to organize the grown under? And what were the maybe a couple of decisions that you go one way or the other? That's a good question. How do we organize the business legally here? Uh, so not at all so far is the answer. Uh, I think in the in the future, probably the best case scenario is it gets absorbed under another nonprofit. I don't think to <clears throat> for us to operate in kind of a lean way or a fast moving way, I don't think we'll ever incorporate as a nonprofit ourselves. And um, in the future, it might make sense to be an LLC, but right now it doesn't. So right now we just sort of exist on the web <laughs> and as ourselves. So yeah, that's a good question. Um, thank you. <laughs>